All right. Uh, hello everyone. Um, today I'm just making a quick video for you guys, just to go like an overview video. So I'm gonna give you guys this file. This will be the Rhino file. I'll type in Grasshopper. You'll also get the Grasshopper file. And by now you guys should know how to open up the two files together. So first you open up Rhino file. So you go File Open. And you open up the file that I gave you guys. And after you open up the Rhino file, you go to File Open. And you open up the Grasshopper file. Once you have both of them open together, you should see some sort of geometry um, in in Rhino. So this is a quick overview. I won't be going over every detail, just general. And the point of this is just to allow you guys to um, modify and come up with your own you know, modification to the script itself. Uh, I've been working on it. You guys can read the instructions in some small words, but I'm going to be go going over that um, with you guys. So just going over this image we see right here. Um, you guys can also read a text where it basically says that um, I'm basically associating every point with a point of the human body. And I said that it's important that we start to understand how we can take the point as data and give it um, an, an identity. Right now I'm telling it, I'm saying that the points itself represent, um, you know, this guy's head, center of the head, maybe um, this joint area of the hand, um, the center of gravity, which is like center around here. So um, what I'm basically doing is saying that this point, um, represented by these pieces of the human body, and they sort of be create a space himself and conform to the human body to create an actual space. And this is sort of this sort of a conceptual idea of how we can start figuring out how these points can create shape. But this is just my idea. You can go with this idea and see what you can get up come up come up with, or you can come with your own idea and get these points. Um, different identities, so you can make them do whatever you want them to do. So you can end up using three points and saying um, the base, center, and top, and then seeing how those three points themselves can start creating shape. You don't have to use all the points, basically. So here is an, ex an example. So I originally had um, zero to nine, so about ten points. But you can see one is disconnected. So I decided I don't want to use all the points. I just want to use um so I use nine points. So I disconnected the one point. So originally I'll just pull it back how it was. And this is how your files should look as well. Let's disconnect this. go back. So I forgot to hold shift. I can edit this. Turn that to 10. And this should be how your file should look originally. Or something similar where it has um, from point 0 to point 9, which is 10 points, plugged into point. I just made this really quick. I'm going to go, I'm going to demonstrate this with you. And these points are plugged into points, the point area. And then you have the gene pool here, and it plugs into here. So this is basically what you guys get. And let's say you don't want to use all 10 points. You want to associate the points differently. You don't want to use all 10 points. You can always disconnect one. I'm going to actually disconnect number 9. And I'll tell you guys why. So I hold control. I just drag here. And then just press control simultaneously and plug it right into point so you're just disconnecting it you can also just right click disconnect point and now the point is disconnected from here you see that this is red right and all you get to all you have to do from here after you disconnect this point this is the constructed point you just go to gene pool right click you go to edit and then change this to 9 because now it's not getting 10 points, it's getting 9 points. Press check, press 
Okay, so modify this, not from 0 to 8, just like we had from 0 to 8. So now it has the right amount of points that it should be associated with. And that's all you need to do. You can also disconnect it again, so I can hold control, disconnect it. And just go back here and edit. And change that to 8. Press check, press OK. And now it will update itself. So I also have the description here where I say one disconnect the constructed points. And I have constructed points here. You disconnect the point. And then two, edit the genie pool to have the same amount of points. So now the pool has zero to seven, and I have zero to seven. So you guys can decide how many points you want to use and see how it works. Now how this works is that it actually controls the radius of each point. For instance, you can see five here. Five is here as well. And it's at 90, 90, 89.82. You can modify this. So you can see, if I make it smaller, it becomes less effective. You can see that. Make it bigger. You can see how it sort of become more effective. So it's up to you to decide. The main idea, which you I kind of ran down here, is that you want to have full control of each and every point. Right? We don't want to, you know, have too little point, too little control. We want to make sure we have full control over each and every point that we that we want. So um, after this point, you guys can also actually just go over this really quickly. So let's say you want to move. This looks cool to you, right? This shape looks cool, but it doesn't make sense. For instance, actually, this looks pretty cool. But let's say you don't want people to actually stand at the climb inside of this, right? And start to get out of the box, but you want to sort of keep it in the box remember the material um, size so what you guys can decide is to move them all at once so if I click on points you see points are highlighted all there also have a preview somewhere for each point somewhere here where I just added numbers and uh, they're all connected it's just So I'm just visually I'm just visually showing you guys the numbers. It might get a little confusing, so it's you can also hide them if you don't want to see the black. So I can just hide that. So I just want to see the numbers. But anyways, you have the points here. What you can do is actually move the points themselves rather than moving all of them individually. So you can actually move all of them. So you can say I want Z to be minus ten. You could say this is going to be 39, right? So this is number 0. So 0 goes down 10 points. You can change the Z minus 10 again. You can keep going with this. You can keep going with this. Um, but the more efficient way to do it, if you're going to move them all, to move them all after the fact. So you have all the points here. What you can do is just do a move command. Move. Take your geometry. Right, you can see the geometry is all moving up already. And now you have the, the motion. So you can say first you want to give it an axis. So X, Y, or Z axis. You want to move it in the Z axis. Which is already moving in the Z axis. And then you can give it a number. So give it let's say 10 so you want to go down actually so let's edit this so minimum is negative 10 press ok bring it all the way down to negative 10 plug in this geometry. The geometry, if you hover over it, let's go ahead and take a panel. Plug this in. It's giving us 10 points, or 7 points actually, 8 points from 0 to 7. 
If I plug in this geometry, it's just the different coordinates. I'm just going to copy this over. Plug in these geometry, which is the points, into this panel. You see that it's the same exact geometry except for the Z. Because we modified the Z axis, if you go to X, Y, Z, the Z will be different in each of them. But the X and Y will be the same. Right? So we just modified it. Now you can just plug in this geometry into points. So you're replacing this point with this new point system and everything should sort of move down. Right? So now you modified all of them together rather than um, having to go back and modify each and every point, which you can if you want to. Uh, another thing you can do is same idea with rotating. You can same idea with moving. You can actually do rotations, so you can do a rotate. And there's many rotations. I'm gonna do a rotate 3D. Mm, yeah, rotate 3D. Take this move geometry, and you can always hover over, like I told you guys before, hover over. Um, this wants that angle. I skip that for now and give it. It wants a center rotation, and it's the axis. So axis, I will give it. Uh, XZ plane center should already be set. You can modify the center point if you want to. Uh, angle say zero to one eighty, and then plug into angle. But I also want to change this to degrees. And now I can modify these points. You can see the points being modified over here. But the last step you want to do is actually take your geometry, your new geometry, and plug it into points. So now you can rotate it. So you go here. Rotate your geometry. Alright, so it's interesting. But um, this is not the right way for you guys to start doing stuff. Don't start plugging nodes in and um, start you know, rotating and moving because you think it's interesting. That's not the right way. You should always think about what you think about at this point. What the points mean to you. So the first thing you guys should do is figure out if you want to follow this idea where points represent a sort of joint movements, um, sort of space how many points you want to use. It's good to start sketching now um, what ideas you're trying to come up with, how big the space should be. Um, don't forget about the box constraint. You want to keep it in this box size. You could go over if you have a good reason. You know, it doesn't really matter. But the important thing is to have an idea. And then after you have your idea, you start to play with it so that, that this script starts to conform to your idea. Don't just start playing with it and hope that something nice comes out at the end. You always have what you want in the beginning and after that you start to modify the script so that it conforms to your own idea. So and also I just, I just do small other changes. So it's going out after. So after we have the metal ball, so this is the node that, that everything's happening in. You just hide this This is some other testing I was doing. Right. So I'm thinking that you know, it doesn't have to be always smooth corners, smooth edges. You can also decide that you want to have more rigid corners. Of course, if you look closely, this is like perfect angle. You won't be able to cut this, so you have to end up doing small fillets. But if you want to sort of do a, s a more rougher angle, you can sort of play with this node to sort of set up right here. You can also hide this. Um, and then we have the fillet corners. Right. This final preview, sh let's see if it works. you guys see here, the 
is trim geometry and a preview. The preview geometry is geometry that's outside of the box. So let's say you want to constrain yourself to this box, which is uh, 4 by 8 should be. Um, what happens is that this kind of helps you, so it kind of says, okay, get rid of everything outside of the box because this is sort of, it gets out of um, your own constraints. You can do that, you can, or you can disregard this script, this, this part of the script, but if you want to, you can keep it where you can sort of see now what exactly geometry you're going to get from it. So this, this geometry is within the bounding box, and if you hide this, this geometry is within is with, is out of the bonding box. If you want, you can disregard it, like I said, and you can just show the full thing. You can show the entire thing. But I think that it's important that you guys um, just go over the script. It's not really complicated. It might be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but after that, it should be a really simple thing. Nothing hard. Um, I didn't use any plugins this um, the script at all so you shouldn't worry about any any plugins um, if you have any any question about where a node goes you can always hold control and alt and then click on a node and it'll tell you exactly where it goes then you can hover over it and you can see it's the contour you can always hover over these letters and see exactly what the input wants you can see what the output is giving one thing really helpful is using the go up on the parameters and then panel and then just plugging things in to sort of understand this helps me a lot just plug things in the output to understand exactly you know what is what is coming out it's a very helpful way to understand just close this it's very helpful so I'm gonna just give you this guys this file it will have the rhino file as well as the grasshopper file in it for you guys um, I'm also going to have a link for you guys to practice with Grasshopper. So I'm going to end this video here.